point of this video hopefully is to make it a little bit more accessible and to quash any qualms that you may have. Quash any qualms. <laughs> exactly. You're gonna so, go yeah, with that. Absolutely. So Hello, I'm Callum, this is Ollie. Hi. Ollie is the other architecture student here at Trinity Hall at Cambridge, and in this video we're going to talk about our application process and how both of our applications were quite different and how there's no such thing as like one particular architecture student or application, portfolio, whatever. Everybody's completely different. <laughs> I did maths, further maths, physics and music at A level and I got an A star in maths and in physics and I got an A in music and in further maths. I did English literature, art and maths and after the government let me have my teacher predicted grades, mm. I got an A in maths, an A star in art and an A star in English literature. I finished school in 2018. I did a year of aeronautical engineering at um, Imperial College London and didn't enjoy it at all. So I dropped out at the end of the year. And then I took a year out after that to reapply. And um, here I am, two years out of school. He's very old. Oh yeah, I'm very old. Um, whereas <laughs> Ollie went straight in. Yeah, I was supposed to be doing my A-levels last year. So no gap year. Where else did you apply then? Like, what uh, I applied to Manchester, Sheffield, Bath, Cambridge and UCL cool. and I got offers for all of them except UCL. I applied for Cambridge, I applied for Manchester, I applied for the University of Westminster and I applied for two courses at UCL because UCL just started oh, yeah. a five-year course that integrates part one and part two. I get lots of questions about A-level subjects in the comments and whether we need physics, whether we need maths, whether you need art, all this sort of stuff. What do you think? I think physics and maths are not essential, but once you get here, mm. I think people are having a hard time now with the structures if they didn't do maths. Do you think? I think to a degree. I would say for me, having done maths, further maths and a year of engineering, structures is like very accessible. Yeah. And I would say certainly having done maths A-level, it makes it a lot easier. However, I wouldn't say that people who don't have it are really struggling. It's not at a significantly complicated level. Um, so I don't think you'd have no. an issue. And certainly it's not required. That's the more important point actually is we're not, obviously we're not qualified to say what you should and yeah. shouldn't study at A-levels. <laughs> and the point of me bringing this up is to highlight the fact that everybody studies different subjects. Art A-level is very helpful if you're looking at what you're gonna take. Yeah. It just means you don't have to assemble the portfolio yourself. You can just bring the work you've been doing for A-levels. It's not needed, it just makes yeah. it easier. Certainly, had I applied for architecture the first time round and still did the A-level subjects that I did, I would have found it very difficult. Because I was on a gap year, I had loads and loads of time to do lots of extra art stuff and I spent a good month doing nothing but preparing my portfolio before the interview. Obviously, if any of you have watched some of my previous videos, you may have seen my portfolio. If you haven't, then click up here now. There'll be a video of my portfolio there. Um, Ollie's portfolio is quite different to mine. Mine, obviously, is mostly um, was a lot of photography, a lot of travel stuff, and a lot of kind of quite specific drawing and sketching stuff. Um, whereas you had a lot more painting and that sort of thing. Is that right? Yeah, I had majority oil painted portraits mm. which you'd think is nothing to do with architecture but apparently was acceptable i remember being advised to keep everything in the same size so i had one portfolio everything on a1 yeah. and then a couple of sketchbooks as well i came um, in balancing everything yeah. off on my shoulder which I, I think is kind of fun anyway and just proves the point like it really doesn't it doesn't actually matter i've had people commenting on the portfolio video asking about kind of skill level and this sort of thing and of course i think it's probably good to have a certain base level of skill but at least the impression that i got was it's less about the technical skill and more about kind of your thoughts behind it. And That's another thing. I bought my A-level sketchbooks. Mm. So they have the whole process within them leading up to all, every single canvas I bought had like several pages of preparation. I've studied That's this really artist. I've done all these practice sketches. Yeah. I've chosen this composition because of this. So they spent quite a long time going through my thought really? process on it rather yeah. than just staring at the finished project. So, so we actually met on interview day here at Trinity Hall um, and I think we both had sort of very different approaches. So what, what was your experience like at interview? How did your interviews go? How did you feel about them? What were your expectations? How were they met or not? My interviews went pretty well, but I had very low expectations for them. I was not expecting to get in 
at all. Okay. So. Um, and were you were you quite nervous because of that when you went into it? Or no, it made me less nervous because I expected mm. nothing. So I just went in thinking I'd have a nice conversation with someone and then I'd go home and nothing. Would yeah, which is quite interesting because for me this sort of really meant everything. And going into my interview, although I'd done loads and loads of preparation, I felt horrifically nervous and felt like my entire oh. life depended on it, which obviously it doesn't. We both had the interviewer who is now our director of studies, now kind of having a very different relationship with our interviewer after um, actually yeah. arriving here. In my interview, I, I you know, I, I liked her, but I definitely felt she was quite sort of imposing as an interviewer would be. Um, but you did, had a pretty different experience? You thought no, she was really nice? I, thought, I thought she was very friendly and she was very mm. nice to me. She probably sensed that I was a little bit nervous when I first came in, so she might have been a yeah. bit nicer to me. I did have a moment where I felt like I was caught in the headlights. I felt like it was kind of the point that we were being challenged, so I sort of embraced it anyway. I mean, I, I've done a Cambridge interview before. Of course, when I applied for engineering, I also applied to Cambridge and didn't get in. And both times I felt sort of had these moments where it was like, felt very, very yeah. scary and I had no idea what to say. Um, although kind of the second time round gave me a bit more confidence to kind of slow down and say, OK, yeah, this has kind of challenged me to the edge of what I know. Um, but I'm going to try and yeah. talk about it sort of more conceptually, I suppose. <laughs> I didn't know the specifics of the question that they asked but I kind of try to deal with the question in, on like an ethical level yeah. I think rather than on a specific level actually uh, a couple of times I yeah. did get the headlight thing but it was when they asked me a question I just completely didn't know the answer to one of them mm -hmm. and you can go I'm sorry I don't know enough and, to give a good answer and how to did this. how did the interviewers react when you said that it was a pretty specific in-depth question related to something in my personal statement and I just said I haven't studied it in this capacity I don't know the answer okay. and they were like oh okay it was quite a reach anyway and they moved on so they just moved on straight away yeah no problem so you can say that if yeah. it's I mean, that's, that's really like, impossible it's better than making something up completely and I think that sort of summarizes the important takeaway here anyway that obviously they are there to try and bring the best out of you so they're certainly not there to be sort of these dragons to try and put mm -hmm. you on the spot and make you really uncomfortable. That's certainly not the case at all. And yeah, no. um, I think they're mostly just interested in working out how interested you are in your subject. Um, so yeah. What were your impressions of me when you met me at the interview <laughs> day? <laughs> I thought you were definitely a nice guy you were I was, <laughs> <laughs> no no, I, no I, want you to be, I want you to be completely honest <laughs> ollie didn't have a very good impression of me oh my that's, not true. <laughs> that's not true <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were very well spoken and you were wearing a suit and you were i was very, not wearing a suit <laughs> you were wearing really a suit you were, what, what did you say you were wearing i said i was wearing a sports jacket and cheetos which so in my mind was smart casual <laughs> um we were told to wear what makes us feel comfortable in the interview and for me being in an interview meant wearing slightly smarter clothes um, and for me it meant wearing doc martens and cargo <laughs> pants i think that's exactly the point though is that it's more about personality than it is about meeting any particular standard i think it's easy to make the assumption that with it being cambridge and quite a sort of highbrow university that there's a sort of kind of prerequisite set of things that you need to have or need to do in order to get accepted and at least with architecture it certainly feels like that's not the case There's a real diverse range of people on the course, I think, fundamentally. That's certainly true. Before we went back into national lockdown, we actually met. We had a group photograph that was, of course, socially distanced, um, a department group photograph, and we sort of vaguely said hello to sort of the other people on our course. And I think that was the immediate impression that I had, was that everybody was wearing completely different clothes, completely different. <laughs> Obviously, like, architects are sort of slightly renowned for, I don't know, fashion and... Dressed like an architect. Dark turtlenecks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Black turtlenecks. I was sort of wearing thing. more colours than anyone there. Yeah, but but this is the thing: was actually everybody was wearing something completely different, and yeah. you could tell that everybody had their own sort of quite unique sort of niche of the way they like to dress. It was quite cool. I thought yeah. it was quite interesting to very see everybody's cool people. different. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Architects. We're very we're really cool. cool. People. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much, Ollie, for joining us the video. I've got a couple of other videos about my application to Cambridge, about my personal statement. More more specifically about the interview and my portfolio itself. So definitely look for those. That'll be linked at the end of the video. You should subscribe to him. If you've got any questions, then please fire away in the comments and we'll both try and answer them. I, I just raped you into a job there. Um, <laughs> <laughs>